Okay, let's talk about the OGET, or rather, the Oklahoma General Education Test as it's known. So, if you're watching this video, I assume that you are an educator in the great state of Oklahoma, and you have to take this exam. So, what we're going to be doing in this uh, video is taking a look at a math practice problem, something you should be able to handle uh, for the type of math that you're going to see on the OGET. So before we get started, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is John from the founder of Tablet Class Math, and I'm a middle and high school math teacher. So I definitely know what it's like to uh, teach in a classroom, go through all the educational effort and work, uh, take certification exams. So I definitely relate to where you are at, whether you are an experienced teacher or a new teacher. Um, us as teachers, we have to work pretty hard, not only getting our degrees and or master's degrees, many, uh, probably most teachers eventually end up getting their master's and beyond, but we have to take these certification exams as well. So it's just the nature of being a teacher these days. So um, what I have here is a math practice problem, okay, that you should be able to handle. Of course, I'm going to explain this uh, in a second, but on the OGET, the kind of math that you're going to be running into, especially let's say if you're an elementary uh, school teacher and you don't, or you don't teach math, or you don't teach math at uh, let's say at the high school level, but I would kind of characterize the math on the OGET as being high school level math for sure. So you're going to have to be strong in algebra, geometry, and other topics. So my advice to you is to really study hard so you don't have any difficulty with the math on the OGET. Now, uh, many, uh, unfortunately, many uh, teachers uh, don't pass the OGET the first time around, and that is not, uh, again, uh, uncommon. So you don't want to be one of those teachers that go in, you know, kind of underprepared, overprepare uh, in terms of the math for this particular uh, exam. And it's going to not only benefit you on the exam, it's going to be benefit you in the classroom as well. Okay, so one last thing, um, I do offer an excellent prep course, math prep course, very comprehensive for the OGET. I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video before uh, we talk more about that. Let's get into this problem. Okay, so here I have uh, two fractions, but they, you know, of course, involve variables. What I'd like you to do is to simplify this, okay? Or in other uh, words, maybe write this in a different way. So... Um, I'm going to go ahead and encourage you to pause the video and think about it. I'll give you a little bit of a clue, a little tip here. Think about how you would maybe do a um, problem uh, like this that involved numbers as a fraction. So an equivalent problem might be something like, let's say, two-thirds plus, let's say, three-fifths. Okay. So you can think about how would you do this problem, and that should give you clues on how to do this problem. Okay. So... Go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. All right, so hopefully uh, all of you out there were, you know, uh, able to do this problem. If you're able to do this problem, okay, of course, I'm going to solve it here in a second. That's my no indication that you're fully ready for this test. But if you struggle with it, that's definitely a, a red flag that, you know, you're going to have to put uh, some more effort into studying. Okay, let's talk about how to do this problem. But before I do this problem... I'm going to show you how to do this problem, okay? Now, all of you out there uh, hopefully could handle a problem like this. It's fractions. We're adding fractions, so we have to take a look at our denominators. And here, the denominators are different, so we have to find the lowest common denominator. In this case, it's 15. Now, how we determine that, that's a whole other uh, discussion, but... Probably most of you out there were able to say, okay, the lowest common denominator is 15, so I'm going to go and multiply this by 5, okay, the denominator here, and the numerator by 5. So in other words, I'm going to end up with a new equivalent fraction of 10 over 15 plus, now i got to go ahead and fix up this denominator, so I have to multiply this by 3. And whatever I multiply by the denom denominator, I have to multiply by the numerator, okay? So if I'm messing with the denominator, i got to do the exact same thing to the numerator. So I have to multiply both the top and bottom here by 3. And that will give me 15, again, over here as my denominator, but 9 as my numerator. So you do this in mathematics. So you have the same common denominator because once you have the same common denominator, I can just add the numerators, right? 
So let's go ahead and just finish out this problem. Okay, we have the one denominator 15. Now I add my numerators. That, of course, is going to be 19, and we're done. Okay, now this is probably the way most of you are going to approach this problem. But there's another way that you can approach this particular problem, adding fractions. And this is a secret weapon that you definitely should know um, in mathematics. So let's rewrite the problem. Okay. And now let's approach it a little bit differently. Of course, I'm going to get back to our original problem here, but let me show you a little bit an easier way to do this problem. I call it the bow tie method. So what you're going to do is you're going to multiply this times this. Okay. Then you're going to multiply this times this, and then we're going to multiply this times this. So let's go ahead and just uh, kind of follow me along. So five times two, we're going to go by this diagonal. Now I call it the bow tie method because it kind of looks like a bow tie, right? Something like that. So five times two is 10. Okay. So right, this is going to be, these diagonals are going to form our numerator. So five times two is 10 plus, because this is an addition problem, we're going to write plus three times three is nine. Okay. So uh, this is again going to form our numerator and I'm going to uh, write a fraction bar and then 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, and when we simplify this, I'm going to end up with 19 over 15. All right, so same as this. This is a fantastic uh, shortcut for both adding and subtracting fractions, and it becomes in, uh, extremely handy when you're dealing with algebraic fractions. Okay, something like this. So let's go ahead and apply this bow tie method to a problem like so. Now, before I actually do that, though, let's just look, okay? I'm looking at my denominators here. I have y and z. These are not common, okay? So here you might be struggling, well, these aren't the same denominator. I'd have to find common denominators. And yes, you can do that, okay? And it's good that you're thinking in those terms, but we just want to get to the answer. So let's apply this bow tie method. Okay, we'll multiply this times this. Okay, we'll go this diagonal, and then we'll go this way. So let's go ahead and do that. So x times z is going to be just xz. Okay, so in algebra, you just write them just like this. And this is an addition problem, so I'm going to put plus y times w is yw. This forms my numerator over y times z, and that is yz. So this is the answer. Okay, this is how you would simplify those two fractions. This is a critical skill. Uh, fractions are everywhere, and you're going to see them for sure on the OGET. Uh, but not just fractions with numbers. You're going to see fractions with variables, and they're te technically called rational expressions. But you don't really uh, need to remember that. But you have to be able to uh, remember in algebra, when you see variables, variables are representations of numbers. Okay, So whatever we do here, you, you, if you get stuck... Um, in an algebra problem, just think about what you would do in a numeric equivalent of that situation. That will often give you the kind of um, clue to what to be able to do on this problem. But again, uh, I chose this problem because if you haven't seen, if you don't watch any more of my videos after this, at least you'll walk away with this extremely useful uh, shortcut method, which I call the bow tie method. Okay, let's go and wrap up this video here. All right, so if you uh, think you like my teaching style, hopefully you consider subscribing to my channel. I've been on YouTube for like 12 years. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos uh, on my channel. I think that will definitely be able to help you out, so hopefully you'll, you'll consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, I'd definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, is this, are you new to teaching, or is this uh, your second time, third time taking the OGET? You know, what, uh, you know, do you teach elementary, middle, high school? Um, any feedback is good feedback. Um, I'm always learning from uh, fellow teachers out there. So uh, leave me some uh, comments. Certainly would appreciate it. And again, I'm going to go ahead and leave uh, a link to my OGET math prep course. It's taken years, uh, year, I'm literally years and actually even more than uh, a decade to build out my course. It's extremely comprehensive uh, because, you know, when you're learning math, you really have to have excellent, you know, uh, tools to be learning from. Okay. So I would encourage you to get yourself organized and, uh, really, you know, increase your math skills before you walk in and take the OGET. Okay. So again, uh, as a fellow teacher, I congratulate you on your choice of career. Teaching is 
definitely challenging. It is, you know, it's hard, okay? But it's also very uh, rewarding, okay? And uh, only those that actually teach, okay, like you and I, kind of will, you know, be able to relate to all of that. But I certainly wish you all the best in your teaching career. Thank you for your time and have a great day.